make sure that you can see this. about the weather today, but at least we're not all riding Reg Ray at 95 miles to Tama. So that is the good news. Jenison, who, who was so gracious about saying, you know what, it's going to be almost 100 degrees, people are going to need fans, why don't I take the extra cards that you have, and we'll make them into fans, so at least people are, you can't hear you still? No, they said they, I think they said we can't hear you. The right one Try it now? Loud. Loud in the microphone. Okay. So a special thank you to Carolyn Jennison. Carolyn is somewhere out there, and Carolyn has a basket of fans and was gracious enough to say, as warm as it's going to be, we need to make sure that people are taken care of. So thank you, Carolyn, for that lovely gesture and for all the fans that are keeping us nice and cool. And a special thank you also to Kirk Tyler, who has always been there for Loretta and I whenever we've called him. There is plenty of Coke and water and everything because he said, I don't want anybody to get overheated, so please come and help yourself at any time to all of the Coke products because we don't know what we'll do with them otherwise. Now somebody asked me, why are you doing the introduction for New Leaf? And actually it all started when Bob retired. The second day of retirement, Loretta called me and said, okay, something's going on. Bob came home and rearranged my whole kitchen and I said, well, that was nice. She said, no, you don't understand. He's right-handed. I'm left-handed. So now I can't find anything in my kitchen because he rearranged everything the way he thought it should be. And she said, if you don't find him a job, I'm afraid murder is going to happen. <laughs> so luckily for me, at that time, New Leaf had just come to town, and I was working with Brian and Deb, and then, so they were doing interviews in my office to find a medical director. So the next morning, I went into Brian and said, Brian, how close are you to hiring somebody? He said, well, I got it narrowed down to two people I think would be really good. And I said, well, wait just a minute. Before you make a final decision, I have one person I think you really need to interview. And he said, well, why is that? I said, well, this guy is a retired ob -GYN. He's also got a pharmacy degree. And I think he'd be really good for this program. So we called, Bill, we called Bob, he came in for three hours. They sat in the conference room. I could hear them laughing and talking. Pretty soon they came up, they came out, they were shaking hands. Bob left, Brian came up to me, gave me a great big hug and said, thank you so much for not making a horrible decision on hiring the wrong person for moving. And I said, I felt a little bit like Yenta in Fiddler on the Roof that I had just made a match made in heaven. <laughs> Because it truly was a match made in heaven, not only for Newley, but for Bob. It gave Bob the most wonderful purpose after his retirement. And not only did that, but it was so wonderful for all of the patients at Newley. And we couldn't have been happier. Plus, as Loretta put it, I saved her marriage. So <laughs> for all of you who are out there whose husbands are thinking of retirement, and you don't know what they're going to do, just give me a call and we'll make sure we find something so that nobody has to go to jail. <laughs> so along with that, 
Now tonight you're, tonight you're going to hear from a number of New Leaf people that have wonderful things to say about Bob, about New Leaf, and about everything that this company has done for the community of Des Moines. And first I'd like to introduce Bonnie Lucas, who has been with New Leaf since the beginning, and Bonnie's going to tell you a little bit about her journey with New Leaf. So give Bonnie a round of applause. Thank you, Pat. She's right. I've been with New Leaf from the very beginning. I had a, a, a hysterectomy, and I had a really hard time with that. And I was going into heads of meetings with Heidi and and things like that, and my hair would be soaking wet and sweat just running down my face. And I said, this cannot go on. And I tried lots of other things and none of it worked. And I saw a TV commercial for New Leaf and I walked in and I said, okay, I wanna give this a, a shot. And they asked me, well, if it works, will you do an endorsement for us? And I said, if it works, I'll be happy to do that because I really need something. So, but I was asked to talk about memories of Bob, and unfortunately Pat used one of my memories because <laughs> Loretta told me about the, the thing about him needing a job, but I know a lot of you here know Bob, and you probably remember him differently for all the different things he's done in life, and some of you may have had babies delivered by him. Some of you may have worked with Doc in his OBGYN practice, and that's a wonderful profession, bringing a new life into the world what joy. But then Doc retired and we all heard the story from Pat about what happened there. Uh, but I heard from uh, people that work with him here that he always had a story to tell or a joke to share. And so they really loved talking with him. And one day Lynn asked Doc to use his vast knowledge of hormones and how they, um, each what each hormone does and what happens when those hormones are balanced. And she said, I need you to write a book about that. So he did. After weeks of working on it, he showed it to Lynn. And Lynn looked at it and goes, well, it's all really good. But she says, you're missing the cortisol and the adrenal fatigue. And he looked at her and he's going, how long do you want this book to be? <laughs> so anyway, he took out his paper and pen and he went back to work. And once again, he gave the completed work to Lynn. And Lynn said, you know, this is perfect. But she says it needs a forward. Now, if you know Doc, you know him looking over his wire ring glasses, and he looked at Lynn and she goes, it's okay, I'll write it. <laughs> so anyway, he loved communicating and helping people understand hormone therapy, and his book truly was, um, makes a difference in patients' lives and will continue to do so. And if you haven't seen the book, this is what it looks like, and it really does help. So I've been a patient for over 10 years. I asked Doc lots of questions, received lots of answers, and those answers weren't just off the cuff. It was kind of nice. He, he always looked up the studies and gave me all the information in the medical journals. Even in his last days, he helped me and my husband, Gene. My husband has a, a very serious issue. He has scleroderma, and I'm not going to go into what all that entails, but he had to have an aortic valve replaced, and we had his doctor told him that he could no longer do testosterone therapy. And so we had lots of questions for Doc about uh, plant-based testosterone therapy, heart issues, stroke risk. He got back to us in a couple of weeks and he gave us all the studies, all the pluses and minuses of taking testosterone when you have uh, an aortic heart replacement or valve replacement. And he let us make the decision ourselves, but he gave us all the information based on studies. So I'm sure all of you have stories of this kind, fun, wonderful man. He is so sorely missed, but this honor that he's getting today would mean so much to him. And I know it means a lot to look at it. And he's probably looking down from heaven right now and saying, oh, shucks. <laughs> so. Anyway, that's, those are my memories of Doc, and I know you all have some too, and, and we're here to talk about those with each other today. And I guess next up on the schedule. Thank you. Really, this is quite amazing. Um, thank you all for coming out this evening. I truly believe Doc is looking down right now and is just really is touched by this. It's, really is something to look out and see all these spaces that have 
he touched. He touched every one of you. And that is my story. Um, what brought me here to New Leaf was his reputation. I have two good friends that are laboring delivery nurses and work with Dr. Seaman. And they told me that he is the nicest person that you will ever meet in the world, which is pretty strong words to say about a person. And they were true. I came in to meet with, actually to do my interview with the office manager and she was sick that day. So something that wasn't the norm was for Dr. Seaman to do the interview initially. And he interviewed me and we hit it off right off the bat. And from that moment, I knew I was talking with somebody that had the same passion that I believe I possess in caring for others. He um, had a lot of stories to tell me uh, in those few months that I did get to work with him. And I wish that I would have had more time to have and gotten to know him as some of you do out here. But those few months that I did have, I will always cherish. One of the things that he shared with me right out the, the gate was just how sad in his eyes, women's health has been, um, you know, since he's been practicing as an OBGYN and now working here at New Leaf. He just felt like we always got the wrong end of the deal. That's what he told me. And as I have been practicing, I can definitely see his words coming true because he told me the evidence is there all along and we just haven't been you know, treating these women. Well now, everybody knows him as somebody that was, he offered hope because he knew the evidence was there and he was willing to treat patients, seeking out, help me, and he was a giver of hope. And I think, as I look out and see other providers here across uh, multiple states for New Leaf, I believe we all hold that same desire and that passion, and we want to give hope as well. And I think Dr. Seaman has created this beacon of hope, which is New Leaf Wellness. And I myself will strive to continue to offer that encouragement that he did, but also offer hope. So thank you. Hello. Thank you everyone for coming today. I know we have probably people, I believe I've come with like 10 to 11 states um, that are coming. You see this amazing crowd, um, you know, to honor what everybody, everybody here has their stories. I mean, we have vendors that have flown miles to get here that has such a close relationship um, with Dr. Sima. It would mean a lot to him. It means a lot to us. It means a lot to the community family. So what we have put together is some memorabilia, memorabilia um, for Dr. Seaman. So if we could get um, Brian Seaman, Dr. Seaman, and Loretta's son to come up, I would like to present him with this. And we had talked about the book, which is actually in that but absolutely helpful. Thank you so much for sharing him. Thank you so much for everything. He was it? He is it? Thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you everybody for coming. Appreciate it. I'd like to echo the same thoughts to everyone today for being here. It is. I look out. I look out and around. I see everyone out here, and it's just encouraging. And at the time that we talked about this, uh, back at the time of the funeral, and there were so many people gathered there, I said, this isn't a proper time to end with Dr. Seaman. It just isn't. It doesn't feel right. It's not right. And it, and it wasn't, was it? And as we, as we examined that, we talked about it. I was talking with my wife, and I said, there's got to be something else. There's got to be something else we can do. And this came about out of that discussion. You know, um, Winston Churchill once said that we, we shape our buildings but thereafter they shape us. And uh, today we're talking about a building, it's true. The, the Medical Arts Center here is not a building that is probably on the National Registry, not a Frank Lloyd Wright, <laughs> right? We see that, it's not. There's nothing spectacular about that in that sense, but the man who shaped this building is Dr. Seaman. 
that's the man who shaped this building, and that's why we're here today. And by that, I don't mean that he's the one that picked out the carpet or picked out the paint colors. And we all probably agree that's for the best, right? <laughs> that's for the best. We, that wouldn't have been the right way. But he shaped the part of the, this building that shapes us. Just like Winston Churchill said, he shaped the part of the building that shapes us, and that is its purpose. Dr. Seaman was instrumental in, in guiding light in the, the shaping of this building, a, a shaping of a building that its purpose was to heal, but not just heal like any other medical practice, but to heal with caring. To, to listen to people, but not just listen in a sense of, of symptoms and such, but to listen with the heart, to listen with, uh, with a reflection back to what it is, that's, uh, that, is, is that people need to hear from him and from others. And he shaped us with the purpose of empathizing also. And those of you who are involved in the New Leaf family and you, you've been in touch with it, you realize what it is, you know what that means. Empathizing is different from sympathizing because a lot of people are here and you know why they're here? We've heard the stories, right? They're here because they've walked that path. They're here because they've been through that and they've un they understand what it feels like. And so now you reach back out, you, you, you touch back and you touch those lives. And that's what Dr. Seaman uh, influenced in us so much in doing that. But he also taught us all to influence and to use all those things, that caring, that listening and everything. But that was also to be the paths of victory, that we could overcome those things, that we could be better and better forms of ourselves and back to being better the way we were. And he taught us all that the practice of medical arts in general was to gently guide people to that victory. You have to get them there. And we all know that we're not always willing to go down those paths. We don't feel like it's the right path, but we know from Dr. Seaman and others that have led us that that is truth and that is the case. And it's his influence, his heart in this practice that remains at the center of what the medical professionals do here and what carries on and through here today. And that's why today, and if we want to be prepared to take the cover off, I really want to why we do that. Today, July 27, 2023, we dedicate this building as the Dr. Robert Seaman Medical Arts Center. Obviously, there will be time to read it afterwards, but I want to uh, capture this for you. We're reminded by our memories of Dr. Seaman that the proper practice of medicine includes equal parts, mastery of the medical trade, as well as a genuine love for the health and well-being of others. May his standard be carried by those who enter this building to practice for various medical professions. And that's truly why we're here today, to be able to do that. I know that Dr. Seaman, I've known him for a long time, and... and and I never knew him to talk about his legacy. He never really was concerned about what people knew about him or who people, what people did know him. But he certainly has a legacy, doesn't he? We can see that today in everyone who's gathered. I see all these different faces. And, and this represents a small portion of the number of lives that he touched throughout his life and how many lives he changed in that time. But we also know that lesser men have buildings named after them, don't we? Lesser men have plaques with their pictures on them, don't they? And I know the difference is, the difference in Dr. Seaman and what we're doing here today is that Dr. Seaman doesn't need a plaque or a building to be named after him to have a legacy, does he? We don't come here today to establish a legacy for Dr. Seaman. We come here today to recognize the legacy of Dr. Seaman and what he meant to all of us and what he meant to so many people. And that's the important difference. The legacy is here. It's, it's here in his family, it's here in you, it's in here in his wife, it's here in his family, and his children, his grandchildren, it's here all around us. And we see it touched through all those different lives and how many different ways that he influenced those things. And the legacy is much more than a plaque or than a building can convey or capture, but I've been saying it all day and I'll repeat it, but it's still a good thing that we do today to recognize. This is, the, this is the thing we can do, the thing that we can capture. He is worthy of this honor and many more. So today, we are sad for what we've lost in Dr. Seaman being with us in, in, this, in this place and in being here on this earth. But we're hopeful, but we're also hopeful because we look forward to watching his legacy go on in all the lives that he touched and all those that are better by knowing and all that. So the thing that I think that would make him happiest as we've talked a lot about that today, what would make him happiest today? I think the thing that would make him happiest is that he continues to live on through all of those that knew Bob. Because that's what he meant to all of us. And I thank you again for all for being here today.
Before I begin, I want to introduce you to the most important people that are here today, for my husband and for me. First, I would like you to have Brian, Amy, Finnegan, and Henry stand and turn and face the group. You are meeting our son, our daughter-in-law, and my two grandsons. Behind them, the other part of our family is left with Joan, John, Tim, and Daddy Stan, and face the other. Joan is my husband's sister, my wonderful brother-in-law, and two of the finest children in the world. Over 60 years ago, I met a man on the campus of Drake University. It was a hot day like today. It was 100 degrees. We were all sweating and dripping and thinking, why are we even school and he came out of the biology lab and he had on a light blue shirt I will never forget this and for those of us my age Matt was clad shorts there wasn't a wrinkle there wasn't a sweat I leaned over to my friend who ended up being our maid of, matron of honor and I said to her I'm marrying this guy I will never have to do a lot of wash <laughs> this is my Polish boy from Chicago who married an Italian girl from the south side of Iowa and over over 60 years we knew each other, we grew together. We started as a teacher and a pharmacist. Then he came to me one day and he said, Loretta, I don't want to sell things on our counter. I need you to listen to what I want to do. And I said, okay, where are we going next? And he said, I'd like to be adopted. I said, wonderful. Now we're in our 30s and he applied to schools and they all loved him, but they thought he should come for six months, whatever, to see if he could do it. There was a school, Des Moines University, who took him at face value. He graduated from there, and then he said to me, I think I want to do something else. And I said, I don't care, what are you doing? He said, I would like to decide what I want to do for residency. So off to New York, we went to St. Joseph's Hospital. We had never heard of a DO, so they were calling Dr. Robert Seaman, MD, Special DD. And he talked <laughs> At the end of his family practice, he said, I want to do one more thing, are you with me? And I said, okay, where are we going now? Upstate Medical Center, and we're going to do OB. On the day he decided that, you all need to know, I found out I couldn't have children. So he came in with our doctor, and we were talking about it. He says, are you okay with this? I said, as long as you buy me a couple, I'll be fine. And I got two of the finest sons you've ever known. I got a young man who was tall and who's now with the Clippers. I have a young man who sits with his father right now and looks down on us. We went through some, some tragic times, but he was the gentle giant of our world. I have a daughter-in-law who's wonderful, and I have two of the finest grandchildren you have ever known. But what I want to tell you about my husband is when we started our life together, we had a view. He was going to bring babies into the world. We came back to Iowa. I wanted to go to Chicago. We wanted to come to Des Moines. So back we came to Iowa. He was going to bring them in the world, and my job was to make sure the world was good enough for him to be in. And that's the kind of partnership we had. We were the best of friends. We, we cared about each other, and sometimes when he would come home from deliveries, he always woke me up. And I knew if we had a boy, if we had a girl, and sometimes if I knew the people, who they were. He was so proud of what he did. He was so proud of helping women. His mother died very early in his life. And he and his sister were raised by a wonderful father that adored him. And he never had the chance to really be what we all want to be, and that's for mothers and fathers. So what he did, he did that for his children. Can you hear me? I have a very deep voice. He did what he did for his children and he did for other children, and he did for women. When New Leaf came into being, it was the best thing that could have happened to him, besides the fact that I was a little upset with him. He did love this place. He now had a new family. And so we had a son in art, we had a son in Ron, we had a daughter in Lynn, although I call her a second wife. We had a family of people at New Leaf who came we wanted to make a difference. We had people who came in who had problems. Bob's theory was that if he could make somebody's life good, then his life was worthwhile. And this is true. This is what my Bob was. We will always be friends. Every day I get up in the morning and I talk to him. And he is in my uh, 
you'll appreciate this. After the funeral, we, we were cremated. Bob and I are going to be together. I got a call from the church, and they said, Loretta, how are you doing? And I said, oh, we're fine. The family's all here. He said, well, you forgot something. And I said, what was that? He said, you forgot Bob. <laughs> so I went back to the church, and I got my best friend, and I brought him back. So as we've been gone through all the things we have to do to finalize things, I talk to him a lot. Sometimes I say, just wait till I get to heaven. You and I are going to have a heavy job. Um, he was, and I don't know how to tell you this, he was the kindest person. He was my supporter. When I was on the council and I'd come in raving like crazy about my council members, he was there to set me down and set me straight. He was there to support everything that I wanted to raise money for. He was the kind of person that you pray for when you get married, ladies, and I got him. <laughs> so as I look around this room at all of you, I want you to have that kind of happiness. I want you to realize how important it is to care about each other because there are those days that they will leave. There are those days that you will leave. And realize the importance of what a family means. And this new leaf is truly a family. For those women that need help just coming in and talking, will make a difference for you. We invite you, we want you to be here, we will always be a family. I thank each and every one of you from really, from the bottom of my heart. I thank my friends that made it out here in 100 degree weather. And I want you all to know that you can come back to our house because we're having sandwiches and pizza and drinks and we're gonna have a party in honor of Bob. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you everyone for coming out as the Red Hat said, you're definitely welcome to join us. Thank you everyone for joining us as Loretta has mentioned. Please join us if you are able to out at her house. And let's all get cool. Thank Recording, seriously, say hi. Let's go get Jersey Mike. 
Oh, watch this guy, Bonnie.